Hello, everyone. Welcome to this Quartz webcast. Um, my name is Samantha Chan. I'm a software developer at the IBM Toronto lab. Um, here with me today, we have Queenie Ma. She is also a Quartz contributor and a developer from San Francisco. And we have Kendrick Wong and Mary Colmore. She is a um, software developer from the IBM Toronto lab with me. We have two very exciting topics for you today. So first, we're going to hear from Queenie. Uh, she is going to give us a tutorial on how to develop a Quartz application and deploy it on a Raspberry Pi. And then about a couple of months ago, uh, we Mary Kendrick and I participated in an um, internal hackathon. And the goal there was that we want to leverage um, Apache Quartz and the Watson um, Insight for Weather API. So we designed a water conservation application for that hackathon. Um, we're going to demo you with that end-to-end -end application and show you how we actually build it. With that, I'm going to pass the presenting uh, to Quinny. And Quinny, you're on. Let me share my screen. OK. So hi, my name is Queenie, and I am an Apache Quarks contributor, and I work at IBM. Today, I will show you how to write a simple Quarks application and get it running on a Raspberry Pi. First, I will go through these steps to register a Raspberry Pi with the IBM Watson IoT platform cloud service on Bluemix. Then after, I will give a brief overview of how to set up a Pi and install an operating system on it. Then I will show how to properly set up the Quarks development environment on your local machine. And finally, I will give a demo where I will walk through an application that sends CPU data to the Watson IoT platform and show the running application in action. So here is the overview of um, the architecture diagram. So on the left, we have a uh, Raspberry Pi, and um, we will get an Apache Quarks application running on it. And that application will send a T-stream of JSON objects um, containing some CPU data to uh, the IoT platform in the cloud. And we will be able to view that data in real time in a browser. So the first step um, is to register with the uh, Watson IoT platform. And it is a service on IBM Bluemix. Uh, there's a free trial available for that, so um, you can sign up for that. And once you have the service created, um, you can launch the platform dashboard. So right now, I will show you how to register the device. So this is the uh, Bluemix dashboard. and this is the service that I'll be using. OK, um, so right now I have no devices and no device types. So I will start by creating a device type. And I will name it uh, raspberry underscore pi. Give it a simple description. And you can also provide some optional attributes, but um, I won't be doing that now. OK, now that the device type has been created, we can create a device of type Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to name it Queenie underscore Raspberry Pi. And uh, the service gives you an option to either have an authentication token automatically generated, or you can provide one yourself. I will provide one, and I'll simply uh, put my name and click Next. And he's, here's the summary of the details that you've provided. And uh, so now it shows you these five properties, and you will need these to connect um, from the Raspberry Pi to this platform service. So uh, let's keep these properties in mind, and I will go back to the presentation. So um, once you see that screen with the, the five properties, you need to create a device configuration file. Um, in this case, I just named it device.cfg and saved it um, somewhere on my local machine and uh, include these, these five properties. And 
we'll be saving this file for later. Um, okay, so once you've registered, uh, next thing to do is set up your Raspberry Pi if you haven't already. Um, so uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation's website has a wealth of information and resources that can be very helpful during the setup process, um, so I recommend checking that out. Uh, first and foremost, you need to install an operating system on your Pi, and the most recommended is Raspbian OS, uh, a Debian distribution. And the easiest way to install that is through Noobs, and Noobs is an installation manager that includes multiple operating systems. Um, if you bought a Raspberry Pi kit, it usually comes with a micro SDHC card with Noobs pre-installed. Um, but if that is not the case, the software is freely available on the website. Uh, once you have installed the OS on your card, um, just insert it into the Pi, as well as the necessary connections to a keyboard, mouse, HDMI cable, to an external display, and an Ethernet cable. Then boot up the Pi and pick an operating system to install. Uh, the process will take a few minutes to complete. So. Um, once your Pi is booted up, you should see your desktop, and um, we can now start setting up your Pi to work with Quarks. Uh, to build Quarks, uh, there are only a few steps we need to take, and it is assumed that you are running Java 8 and you have um, the Apache Ant build tool installed. So at a bare minimum, Quarks requires three jar files, uh, which can all be easily found through simple web searches. The project uses JUnit as a Java testing framework and JCoco for uh, Java code coverage. So after you have downloaded these jars, um, copy them to your uh, to a directory um, .ant slash lib um, based off your home, and uh, that's so ant the ant build file knows where to find these jars. And once that's done, we can proceed to download the Quark's source code. So let's I'll show you the GitHub repository. Um, so Quark's, uh, the source code is hosted in a Git repository, but there is a GitHub mirror. And um, there are two ways to download the source code. Um, so there's either, uh, you can download the zip file of the latest code, or um, you can fork this uh, repository and clone your own fork. And that second method will allow you to pull in the latest changes from developers. OK, so um, for this demo, I just downloaded the zip file to make it easier. And I've already done that. And it is this master.zip and I unzipped it into incubator quarks dash master. So if I go into that directory, um, you, the next step is to um, compile quarks. So uh, to do that, you just run um, ant in this top level directory. And what that will do is um, build the jar files, um, generate the Java classes, and generate the Java doc. And the jar files that we will need for the application live in this target directory here. OK, so let's go back to the presentation. All right, so, um, so the application I wrote is uh, hosted in my Eclipse IDE. Um, and as I mentioned before, you need a Bluemix account, uh, the uh, ILT platform service, and you need to have your device registered in that service. So the application we will be writing is fairly simple. You will take a device configuration file as an argument and use it to connect to the Watson ILT platform service. It then creates a stream of sensor readings, which essentially uses the Pi4j Java library to retrieve the Pi CPU information. Um, so this application does not require any external sensors, which makes it easier to get started with Quarks. But in the next part of this presentation, the use of a real sensor will be demonstrated. Um, so after generating tuples, uh, the app then sends those sensor readings to the cloud, and we can view that data in real time. So that's the overview for the application, and let's start writing it. 
So here is my Eclipse environment. I have already created a, a Java project and the class. So before we start writing anything, um, we need to set up the build path and include the external jars um, that the application is dependent uh, upon. So we have six that we need. Um, the, there's a, the Py4j jar, which you can find on their website. Um, that's used to retrieve the CPU information from the Py. Um, and these five other jars are available in the target directory that I mentioned earlier. Um, okay, so once you have that set up, uh, let's dig into the application. So um, the first step for any Quark's application is to uh, create a direct provider, or an, actually a provider. Um, and this uh, a provider is an object that contains information on how and where your Quark's application will run. And a direct provider is a more specific provider. And that runs your application directly within the current virtual machine. Oh, I forgot to mention this is a the device configuration file we created earlier, and that's specified as an argument. Um, and we will use that in the next few steps. Uh, so after the provider is created, um, we can create a topology instance. And that's a container that describes the structure of your application. So where the streams in your application come from and how the data in the stream is modified, if at all. Um, then we establish a connection to the Watson IoT platform service. So we use this IoTF device class. And to connect, we need to specify the device configuration file with the five properties. Um, next, um, we create a data source, which generates a stream of sensor readings. And in this case, we read from the sensor every second, which is indicated by these two arguments. And let's look closely at how we can generate each tuple on the stream. So I've separated that into a separate method here called system info. Um, so to create this continuous data stream, we utilize this topology.pull method. And we can specify what each sensor reading um, or tuple will look like. A Watson ILT requires that data be sent in JSON format. So we specify that each tuple on the stream is a JSON object that consists of three properties. So the first property is the time. And the next two are CPU temperature and CPU voltage. So to get these two properties here, we use the Py4j library. And it has a system info class that contains numerous methods to obtain system level data about uh, a Raspberry Pi. And that's all it takes to uh, create the stream. And every second, one JSON object with this structure gets created. Uh, now going back to the main method, um, here's where the magic happens. Uh, the ultimate goal of this application is to send data from a Raspberry Pi to Watson ILT platform where you can monitor its state. And this line does that. So um, using the ILT device created here, we can send device events to the cloud and um, use the stream, the reading stream that we created. And in this case, we use the fire and forget quality of service, meaning that we send each tuple at most once. Um, so after we send those, those tuples to the to the platform service, um, we can print the stream to system.out. And we I did that for debugging purposes. Um, and finally, the last step of a Quark's application is to submit the topology to the direct provider. All right, so um, this is all running on my local machine. And uh, we what we want to do is get that on the Pi. So to do that, I can export this application as a runnable jar file here. Um, but first, uh, we need to generate a run configuration. So all you need to do is um, just click Run as Java application, but it will fail because we do not provide the device configuration file argument. Um, but should, don't worry about that. Uh, 
we will get that working once we have this application on the Pi. So we can export the jar file and select the class IOTF Raspberry Pi sensor and provide a path uh, to save the jar file to. And in this case, I selected package required libraries into generated jar, which will, um, which means that the third-party jar files will be uh, already included in the generated jar. Um, so just click finish. Okay, and to get this to your Pi, the easiest method is to use a USB device. And I have already done that. And I have my Pi here, and I'm connecting through it to it through SSH. So here are the, the files that you'll need. You'll need the jar file that we just created containing the application, as well as the device configuration file. So this is the configuration file. Now all you need to do to run the application is um, java-jar specify the name of the jar file, and the argument was the device.cfg file. And now it's trying to connect to the platform service. And here it says that we successfully connected, which is good. And these are the readings generated from the Pi. And these are the readings that are um, being sent to IoT platform. So I'll show you that these data points now in the service. Okay, so here is the here is my device here, Queenie underscore Raspberry Pi. And if you wait a few seconds, um, these devices will show up here. So if you click on one particular reading, we see that it contains three properties: the time, CPU temperature, and CPU voltage, uh, which is what we expected. And now we can use this to monitor our Pi from somewhere remotely, possibly. And so that is the application. And um, now I will be passing it over to uh, Mary. And they'll talk about an application that they wrote uh, 